After the heavens fell, the old world was destroyed. But even amongst its ashes, the desire for power and control remains. While some of the survivors have chosen to rebuild, and others have chosen to destroy, the most dangerous seeks dominion over all. And it falls to you to cut the head from this serpent once and for all. Rage 2 is an open-world shooter. In it, you play as a wasteland warrior who is equipped with a suit of advanced power armor. As the game opens, your hometown is attacked by an army of dangerous cyborgs, and you, as one of the few survivors, set out into the post-apocalyptic landscape in order to take revenge against their leader. As you emerge into the open world environment, you'll be able to traverse the landscape, either on foot or in a variety of vehicles. As you explore, you'll come across a variety of ruined and lost locations filled with deadly enemies. You'll be able to use your weapons and sometimes even your vehicles to defeat these enemies, at which point you can loot the ruins for valuable supplies or currency. Afterwards, you'll be able to travel to one of the game's towns in order to purchase items from vendors or pick up new story missions and side quests. Completing quests or clearing out enemy strongholds will reward you with currency, crafting materials, and upgrade points, which you can use to improve your weapons, your skills, and even your vehicle. While some locations are locked off as part of story missions, most of the world is open to explore. You can choose to attack enemy bases or convoys or just look for treasure as you see fit. There are also multiple side quests, including races, arena battles, and hidden mini-bosses. You can also choose to just drive around and take in the landscape. Now, normally at this point, I would talk about the game's good qualities and then follow that up with its flaws, uh, but I'm actually going to reverse that convention for a very simple reason, and that is that Rage 2 gives a very poor first impression. Just coming out of the introductory sequence, there's nothing to recommend, and the game is incredibly generic at every level. You step out into the environment, and it's very familiar. A post-apocalyptic setting with a lot of scrapyard bandit camps and mutant-infested sewers. All of it rendered in brown and gray with occasional magenta or cyan highlights. Now, granted, it's an open world, and you can go wherever you want, and there are even multiple vehicles that you can choose from to get around in, but even then, the handling of the vehicles is dodgy at best. The game's story and its associated quests also aren't very inspiring. Uh, most of them just revolve around you traveling to a location, defeating all the enemies there, and traveling back. The side quests are even worse. Most of them are just bounty missions where you travel to a location and kill a bunch of enemies. Uh, there are others where you have to fight a bunch of immobile sentry turrets, which just involves you dodging back and forth behind cover for two or three minutes. And then there are the mini-boss encounters where you'll fight the same pallet-swapped giant mutant enemy something like nine or ten times before the game is over. Also, the plot feels like it's trying way too hard to be both a bloody tale of revenge and betrayal, and also a wild, wacky wasteland adventure with eclectic characters and crazy over-the-top arena battles. But the most unfortunate part is the combat, which is very lackluster at the start of the game. In the beginning, you'll have your pistol and assault rifle and shotgun, very familiar, very orthodox choices. You'll also have your bladed boomerang wing stick, which is a little help, but beyond that, there's nothing to applaud. 
the combat is slow, enemies have a lot of armor, you don't have a lot of ammunition, and even the movement feels unusually tanky, uh, like your character is sliding around on a slippery surface. Even your melee attack has an uncomfortably close range, requiring you to be almost on top of your target in order to hit them. The only standout is your overdrive ability, which, when charged, allows you to enter a rage mode and deal extra damage. And that is the one hint that there's actually something deeper hiding beneath Rage 2's surface. Because, as I mentioned before, while the game makes a very poor first impression, once you start unlocking new abilities and making progress, a lot of the game's problems start to turn around. For instance, the environment starts off very familiar with a lot of post-apocalyptic towns and sewers, but then once you start exploring, you find new areas like swamplands or a desert with abandoned cities that you can drive around. There's even a forest area with giant mutated megaflora and rivers and waterfalls. It's not a lot, but it does help to differentiate the areas. Another good example is the vehicle selection. Early on, you've only got access to a couple of cars and basic trucks, but once you start collecting more vehicles or winning races and completing missions, you can both increase and improve the vehicles that are available to you. Upgrading your starting truck with new guns and rocket launchers even allows you to take on these dangerous roving convoys in these high-speed, high-risk action sequences. And if you're someone like me, who wasn't a big fan of the vehicles in the first place, eventually you can unlock a hover bike and just fly around and ignore the driving altogether. Heck, towards the end of the game, you can even unlock a tank, which allows you to take your aggression out on anyone on the road that dares get in your way. You can even drive your tank up to those annoying turrets that are scattered around the environment, and, uh... And, uh... Really? You're not going to let me take out these turrets with my souped-up tank? Oh man, that is, uh, that's really annoying. But probably the best thing is how completely the combat turns around. As I said before, at the start of the game, the shooting is not impressive, mostly because you have a very limited selection of weapons and abilities. But once you start unlocking new equipment, that all changes. Oh, is your standard assault rifle not interesting enough? Well, how about a charged up sniper rifle? Or a dart gun that launches enemies into walls? Or a handgun that just sets people on fire? Rage 2 actually has a great selection of powerful weapons. And it's not just weapons either. You'll also unlock a number of special abilities that you can use in combat as well. The first one is just a dash ability that allows you to quickly get away from an enemy attack. But then after that, you'll get a, a power strike, and then a ground slam, and then a barrier, and even a gravity grenade. All of which are incredibly useful, and once you unlock them, completely change the dynamic of the game's combat. I'm not even kidding here, the combat at the beginning of the game is completely different from the combat at the end. In the early sections, the best you can hope for is using your assault rifle to trade shots with the enemy as you jump between different pieces of cover. Towards the end though, having abilities like barrier or ground slam mean that you get to dictate the flow of battle. Using your abilities will actually charge your overdrive, so you're rewarded for being aggressive and taking risks. It's a completely different experience, and it's honestly a pity that the game takes so long to come into its prime. However, even though Rage 2 does manage to turn around a lot of its lesser features, there are still parts of the game that never quite improve. 
The storyline never manages to come up with any clever twists or turns. The side missions never stop being repetitive. And the game's progression system is unnecessarily complicated. I mentioned before how completing quests will reward you with upgrade points, but what I didn't mention is that there are like four different kinds of upgrade points, which must be spent on completely different weapon and skill trees, which require a separate upgrade currency to unlock new tiers, which is different from gear upgrades, which you have to buy from vendors with cash, which is separate from character upgrades, which require rare resources, and it's all just way too much to keep track of. Also, the game has its share of bugs as well. Enemies will occasionally get stuck on the terrain. Uh, sometimes the terrain itself will be missing or out of place. And even the menu, the menu of all things, is uncomfortably laggy. I mean, I guess maybe because I'm playing on a console, but even then, there should never be this much lag just switching between different tabs in the character menu. Ultimately, Rage 2 is a very odd experience. I'm, I'm hard-pressed to think of another game that has such a legitimately fun experience, but also goes out of the way to bury its own potential. And making a recommendation is tricky, because by the end, I was having a lot of fun, but at the same time, I had to work through the entire first half of the game to get there. And the thing that decides it for me, ultimately, is the game's basic disinterest in making a fun experience. Because here's the weirdest feature. Remember all those cool weapons and powers and upgrades I mentioned? Guess what? Those are completely optional. That's all side quest material. There are only two upgrades, the dash and the shotgun, which are story related. Everything else is hidden in the wasteland, and if you don't do enough exploring, they're entirely missable. And that is a bizarre design decision. To take all the best parts of your game and just scatter them around so that players who aren't paying attention could potentially just walk past them? There are a lot of questionable compositions in the game, but that one strikes me as the most ridiculous. In the end, I would give Rage 2 2 out of 4 stars, but not a recommendation. The second half of the game, when you have all of your weapons and abilities unlocked and available to you, is a lot of fun, and that is almost certainly the game that they were trying to make, so why you have to play through the boring first half is just puzzling to me. Alright, well, thanks once again for sticking through till the end. Some things, like this, get better in the second half. Till next time.